Hello. In previous exercises, you have learned how to write MD codes. We have also discussed how MD provides us with a way to estimate ensemble averages. There is a problem, however, if we want to make a connection with experiments. The MD codes that we have learned to write thus far generate configurations that are consistent with a particular fixed energy. We can thus use them to sample from the NVE ensemble. This is a problem as it is difficult to fix the energy in an experiment. What is easier to fix in experiments is the temperature. Instead of having an MD code that samples from the NVME ensemble, we would like an MD code that samples the NVT ensemble. In other words, we would like to be able to do constant temperature rather than constant energy MD. Thankfully, it is possible to do constant temperature MD and in this video, I'm going to explain to you how such calculations can be performed. Before we get onto the programs, however, we will need to remind ourselves of the statistical mechanics we are using here. As I explained in previous videos, the constant energy average for the property A is given by this expression here. The sums in this expression run over all the microstates the system can adopt. Ai is the value of the property A in the ith microstate, and delta is a Kronecker delta that is 1 when Ei, the energy of the ith microstate, equals E, the system energy. This delta is 0 if this difference takes any value other than 0. As discussed in the previous video, this complicated looking expression expresses an easier statement. The constant energy average for A can be found by adding together the AI values for all of the states that have an energy of E and dividing by the number of states with an energy of E. If we wish to calculate an ensemble average at a constant temperature, we have to use this expression. This expression is very like the constant energy expression Notice, however, the delta functions are replaced by these exponentials. Remember also that beta here is 1 over kVt, where t is the temperature. To understand how we run constant temperature MD, it is useful to start by trying to understand how systems in the lab are maintained at a constant temperature as we will try to reproduce some similar mechanism in our numerical simulation experiments. In the lab, the system under study will typically be quite small, as shown here. This small system will then be coupled to some much larger environment. If changes are made to the state of the system that cause it to cool down, heat from the environment will be transferred into the system to maintain equilibrium. Furthermore, because the environment is much larger than the system, any flow of heat from the environment to the system will not change the temperature of the environment. The combination of system and environment will thus remain at the same temperature. Similarly, if changes are made to the system that cause it to heat up, heat will flow from the system to the environment. Again, the environment is big, so the small flow of heat from the system will not cause it to heat up. As I explained above, we use a similar idea in our numerical simulations. Basically, we imagine that there is an external, large environment coupled to the system of interest, and we allow heat to flow to and from this environment to the system in order to maintain the temperature. This perhaps sounds complicated, but in practice, all we really need to do is change the velocities of the particles. In particular, we change the velocity of the particles, v, so that the following expression is satisfied. Notice that the expression on the left-hand side of this equation is just the average kinetic energy of the particles. The quantity in the angle brackets that is being averaged is half the mass times the velocity squared, which is an expression for kinetic energy that you should know well. 
To fix the temperature, we use a result known as classical equipartition, which tells us that if the temperature is T, then the average kinetic energy of each degree of freedom should be a half kVT. We can thus run constant temperature molecular dynamics as long as we have a thermostat that adjusts the velocities in such a way that the average kinetic energy satisfies this expression shown on the slide. There are a variety of different ways of implementing thermostats that can be used to control the temperature in an MD simulation. The way that I would like to teach you in this module is a method known as Langevin dynamics. The details of why this algorithm works are beyond the scope of this module, but the algorithm is nice because it basically just involves sticking a couple of extra steps on the velocity Verlet algorithm that you learned in the previous exercise and that I've illustrated again on this slide. The first of these thermostat steps is performed before you start the velocity Verlet steps that you've already learned about. The second thermostat step is then performed at the end of the normal velocity Verlet algorithm as shown here. Furthermore, just as with the velocity Verlet algorithm, you can repeat this process multiple times to generate trajectories with as many frames as you wish. As I have already stated, I don't want to spend a lot of time dwelling on where these equations for the Langevin thermostat come from. It is worth noting, however, that if you are doing Langevin dynamics, you need two parameters for the algorithm. The first of these is the time step that was discussed in the video on the velocity Verlet algorithm, and the second parameter is called the thermostat friction. This parameter is given by the symbol gamma in these equations here. It is also worth noting that when you do a Langevin dynamics, you are injecting some randomness into the system, as the capital N01 is a standard normal random variable. To finish this very cursory introduction to competent temperature dynamics, it is perhaps worth spending a moment explaining how to implement the algorithm that was shown schematically on the previous slide in Python. This will hopefully convince you that the coding of this new algorithm is not too difficult. You are in fact already able to do a lot of this as you have hopefully written an NVE, NVEMD code like the one shown here in the earlier exercises. The NVT version of the MD code would then look like this. This is definitely longer than our NVE code, but notice first of all that this part of the NVE code which initializes all the variables, can be copied directly into the NVT code. The only difference in this early part of the two codes is that I have initialized the temperature of the system on this line here. The remaining four lines of Python, Python code in this part are identical to the lines of Python code that initialize the variables in the NVE code. Next, notice that the four lines of code that are inside the loop in the NVE code have been copied verbatim into the NVT code here. The new code in the NVT code is this part before the loop that basically initializes the thermostat variables and these lines here before and after the steps of the velocity Verlet algorithm are run through. These are the steps that apply the thermostat. The final four lines that I've not discussed yet are all lines like this one here. These lines update this variable called therm, which is initially set equal to zero. This therm variable is used to monitor the energy that is being transferred to and from the environment. Monitoring this transfer of energy is important as the total energy of the system and the environment should be constant 
as the dynamics should ultimately be conservative. When you write NVT codes, you should thus test that they are working by ensuring that the sum of this variable, therm, and the kinetic and potential energies are equal to a constant. That is pretty much all you need to know to implement a constant temperature MD code, though. So off you go. Give it a go in the exercises. Thanks for your attention, and good luck.